All right, hello everyone, and thanks for taking time to join our Lambda 8 webinar. Um, we're excited to show this to you. I just want to take a couple of minutes to uh, introduce myself and to give you a bit of an overview of what you can expect um, on the webinar today. Um, so I'm Colleen Hostetler. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at NBS Scientific. Um, and we're going to start by just giving you a brief uh, overview presentation of the features and benefits of the Lambda 8, uh, followed by a live demo um, where we'll walk you through the software and also show you how it laser etches the tubes. And then after that, we will conclude with a Q&A session. So please feel free to type your questions into um, the chat um, Q&A section, and we will um, answer as many as we can at the end of the demo. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to Ryan, who is going to do most of the talking now. Hi everyone, like Colleen said, I'm Ryan. Um, I'll be doing the demonstration portion of the webinar today. Uh, and I thought that we could start with, you know, just a brief overview of the unit and some of the specifications and features. Uh, so currently the Lambda 8 um, works best with Micronic hybrid tubes and Fluid X jacket tubes. Uh, they, have, they are able to make adapters right now for tubes from 0.3 ml to 15 ml tubes. The unit also works with things such as taps and racks and glass slides. Um, but it does need a pigment to be able to laser etch onto. It cannot be a clear surface. If it's a clear transparent, uh, the laser beam will etch right through to the bottom of whatever the tube is sitting on. Uh, some of the dimensions, it is 18.98 inches by 16.38 inches by 30.63 inches. It weighs roughly 100 pounds, and it does operate in a room temperature environment. It cannot function in a cold, in, in a cold room or a cold environment. So we say um, it's 41 degrees, 41 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 to 30 degrees Celsius. Um, also, it can etch any shape, text, logo, uh, or sample ID directly onto the surface. Um, it does come with a one-year warranty and service options for the unit are available. Um, and then I guess now we can get into a look at the unit itself. You know, and so now here we have the Lambda 8, as you can see the size of the unit. In front here, we have the power switch. Uh, you should have put this into an upright position to turn the laser on. The lights down here are just to let you know that the unit is in fact working and it's all functioning properly. This light here, you will need to press after starting the unit to release the laser. Um, the laser has a, a lock on it so that you can't use it whenever you're not intending to use it. So inside the unit, we have the laser up top. It does come with a covering for transport and for it's not in use uh, to have the, the covering protecting the laser. We have the tube adapter down here where the tubes go. It's four screws that screw into the bottom of the unit to hold the adapter and the tubes in place. It does have some safety features to go with it. Down here, we have an emergency stop button. Um, if you're in the middle of a run and you see that you have the wrong tubes, the wrong adapter, it's labeling the wrong information, you can hit that and it'll stop the laser at any point. Um, it also has a safety feature of the door must be closed for the laser to work. If the door is open at all, the laser will not function. Um, it needs to be closed. There's like a little like safety lock you can kind of feel whenever you close the door. Um, also, in the back, it does come with an air filter. The air filtration system is needed because the unit or the laser is burning into the tubes. So there can be some particles that are released during the laser etching process and the air filter will help vent them out. Um, it also has the option to vent to the outside if you have, need that for your lab. Um, well, that is a brief, oh, actually one more thing. So the adapters, since you can't see the one here, 
I will show you guys just an adapter. So this is for the 1.4 ml Micronic hybrid tubes that I mentioned earlier. So the hybrid tubes come with a white patch on one side and a 1D and a human readable code on the other side. So it won't be able to laser on the transparent side. It has to be on the white patch. And that white patch needs to be facing upwards whenever you put the adapter in. Um, so that is a little bit of a manual process to put the tubes in at the right position. But now we will move on over to the software. So the software is EasyCAD version 2.1. Um, this is what you're going to see whenever you open the software to set up a label template for your run. It's very easy, very user friendly, um, you know, drag and drop software. We will go ahead and just make a little rough template here. So we'll grab some text, we'll throw text in there. Um, the text box is down here. We can do Lambda 8 demo. We can throw the date in. And the whole idea that you wanted to include as well. And then we'll hit apply. And you can see it's pretty big, but we can drag it around. We can make it bigger, make it smaller. And right now there's just an outline of the text. So to fill that in, we're going to be hashing that. So hatching just fills in those blank spaces. Um, the laser just not colors it in as it goes. So we're going to go ahead and pick our hatch type. And OK, you can see it's nice and clear, high resolution, it's pretty crisp. Um, you can also add a logo, a picture. Um, we're also going to add a barcode here for this for demonstration purposes. Um, over here, you have the option to do um, a lot of different barcodes. Right now, it's code 39. We're going to go ahead and hit data matrix. And we'll add some numbers. Hit apply. And we can make this bigger. We can also fill this in. So make it a little bit darker and more crisp as well. You can group things together, drag them all together. Uh, so the making a template is pretty, uh, pretty user friendly um, for label setup or lasering setup. Now on the right hand side over here, you'll be able to see some different parameters. So the default parameter is what's your best case scenario to use. Um, it'll give you these crisp high resolution lines. You'll be able to read everything just fine. If you do have, you know, um, you want different results, you have you know, certain specifications you need, you can change the speed and the power on the right hand side here to make the laser um, work a little bit faster, as well as you know, kind of get uh, darker lines as well with the power. But like I said, the default is great. Um, try that out first, and then if you have any questions, we can, you know, discuss further with you. Um, also, down here in the bottom left hand side, you'll see a red button and the mark button. So the red button, it will shine a red light inside the unit on top of the tube to give you an outline, a kind of a guideline of where the laser is going to happen on the tube. So you do need to make sure that that white patch is facing up and it's kind of in the center and then the red line, the red light will come down. And if the red light looks good on tube, that's exactly where it's going to mark. So right now we have a tube in the unit. I'm going to pull up a save file that we have already. Because it's already in the correct place. It's we're ready to go. Um, and now I'm going to hit mark and then I will grab the tube and go ahead and show it to you. So as you can see, we have Lambda 8 demo, we have a 2D code, and we have the date on there. 
Um, so I only have three lines of text on there, and it took maybe maybe three seconds to laser the tube in total. Uh, throughput will depend on the amount of information you're putting on the tube, as well as what the information is. Barcodes, pictures, logos will take a little bit longer than regular text, um, as well as adjusting the speed uh, will also increase or decrease time it takes for a tube. Now you can do multiple tubes at once. The adapter we have in there for the 3ML tubes holds 12 tubes in total. So you can load that up with 12 tubes, do all 12 tubes at once. Your time will still be, you know, roughly two to four seconds per tube though. Um, so we'll go back and I'll show you how to go ahead and do on the software for three tubes. So in the software we have a three tube setup. And all I did for this was I just copy and pasted my original one. I moved it so whenever I hit the red the red light on the inside of the unit that this was right on top of the tube. I made sure that as you can see over here, the position, the X position on the left is the same throughout for all, so that we're getting uniform, you know, consistent results with our labels in label placement. You would just have to repeat this if you were doing for 12, you know, three more and six on this side. Um, but right now we're going to go ahead and load up the unit again. And then we're going to get red real quick, take a look inside. I would show you guys the light inside, but it's going to be pretty hard to see with the webcam, so you'll just have to trust me on that one. And now we're good to go, so we're going to go hit mark again. And so now we have our three other tubes that we just lasered. It took about 10 seconds for these three tubes. We have the same thing that we did on the first ones. You can see it's a clear, crisp. Well, I hope you guys can see that it's clear and crisp. It looks great on my end. But yeah, so in these Micronic hybrid tubes, they are available. Um, in 0.75 and a 96 well, all the way up to a 6 ml tube and a 24 well. This is what we recommend to use on the unit, but if you do have any other, um, if you do have any other uh, tubes that you'd like us to look at, please, you know, send us some links. We might ask for samples to test them out to make sure that they're compatible and that we can make rack adapters for. Yeah, like I said, it's this is the Lambda 8. It's very user friendly, easy to use, pretty straightforward with um, you know, what it can accomplish with the laser etching. And that about wraps it up for the presentation. We will now move on to the QA portion of the demonstration. Okay, so please feel free to send any of your questions in um, through the chat feature. And um, like I said, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, I do have. I do have one question, um, a couple questions here uh, so far, Ryan and everyone else, please feel free to continue to send in questions. Um, the first question we have is, can the tube feeding be automated? Uh, so great question. I do not believe that the tube feeding is going to, going to be able to be automated. You might be able to automate placing tubes down into the adapter, but you're still going to have to unscrew the old adapter and place a new one in. So no, the tube feeding will not be able to be automated. It is more of a manual process. Great. Um, the next question is, um, sort of going back to the speed, um, 
we had a question about how long we, they thought it would take to mark 2000 vials. I don't know if you want to share again, like the specs of the, the unit and how many tubes it can hold at a time. Yeah, so uh, it all, it's all going to depend on the tube size and how many tubes you can fit um, in the unit at once. So with the 96, uh, 96 well tube, you're going to be able to fit 18 of those on one rack. Um, so, I mean, 18 tubes, maybe three seconds a tube, and then you'll have to reload and start again. So 2,000 tubes will be a little bit tedious, um, but the actual time it takes to label each tube is not that long. We'll just be changing out tubes in between runs. Great. Um, and just along that line, maybe to add, you know, we do also have a sort of big brother to this unit that's a bit more automated, um, but that unit can typically only work with SVS footprint, um, you know, standard format racks, but that unit um, can, you know, can pick and place and take tubes to the laser. So if that's of interest, we can certainly um, send you more information on that. Um, Let's see, another another question. Uh, is the laser etching chemical resistant and is it also compatible with a wide range of temperatures? Uh, yes, so it is chemical re resistant. Um, I mean, we would also we would ask what chemicals you're being exposed to, but the laser etching is etching into the surface of the tube. So, I mean, it's abrasion resistant, chemical resistant, and can withstand temperatures, um, extreme temperatures as well. You know, LN2 is not going to be an issue uh, to store these in after you've laser ash onto them. Okay, great. And uh, maybe just one more here. Um, can, can you laser etch frozen tubes? Yes, you can laser etch tubes that have been frozen or have sample in them. Um, as long as you're etching into a pigment, the laser is not going to go through to the other side of the tube. It's just going to la laser etch on the surface of the tube. So the sample inside is still going to maintain its integrity and there won't be any damage to the sample. Um, and frozen tubes uh, pose no issue either. Okay, um, and so far that is all of the questions um, that we've received. So um, I'd just like to thank everyone for taking time out of their schedule to learn a bit more about the Lambda laser marker. And, you know, please feel free if you have any other questions or if you'd like to receive a quote, um, you can email info at NBS scientific.com and we'll be happy um, to help you and you know and talk to you about different compatibility and all those types of things but again just thanks so much and um, we hope to hear from you soon <laughs>